Andrew. Andrew learns from me. We teach each other a little bit of R, and we've got some exciting news that we're going to talk about at the end of the video. But first of all, Andrew, how are you today? Hey, it's good to see you, Craig. Hello, everybody else out there. I'm doing really well, um, except for a small little thing. I was getting ready to do this vid. I was shaving, and I gave myself a nice little nick here. So if you see me kind of like dabbing away a little <laughs> blood, I made the decision to go forward with it anyway. I'm going to soldier through. That's yeah, just where I'm at. Good. How you I doing today, Andrew? Before we started recording, I said, "Look, you know, we need to get, we need to be, seem engaging, and if it takes physical injury and and the bearing of blood to do that, you know, so be it. You know, welcome that's, to the cause, commitment. That's all we ask. It's just, <laughs> just my love for data science. We'll get, we'll get through this. And if uh, I, so, and if I collapse to the side, just take over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Andrew. Uh, at the end of the video, we're going to talk a little bit about the book that we're writing together, yeah. which I'm super excited about. Super excited. So if you're watching this, stick around. We're going to talk, just talk about a book that we are putting together that is going to be so much fun. For, yeah. We're having a great time writing it, by the way. It's really, really fun. Totally. Um, Andrew, who should go first with the Today I Learned? Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just uh, go ahead and show my little thing. Yeah, please do. Let's yeah. see here if I can find my, uh, find my share button. There we go. All right. Can you see my screen okay here? Yes. Yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to show you a function that I've known for a while that I really enjoy, but I learned something new about it the other day that I think is good to share. So I'm just loading up the NYC Flights 13 mm -hmm. package, which uh, nice. I used Lovely when I was day. learning um, joins from the R for Data Science book. The, uh, yeah. the function I want to show, though, is the skim function from the skimmer package. And the skimmer package has lots of functions, but the only one I think I've ever used is skim. And uh -huh. this is a uh, sort of a souped up version of summary or glimpse. I'll execute it and then I'm gonna make my, my window larger so you can see more specifically what it does. Run it one more time so it prints a little more nicely. And so this is giving you just a summary of the data set, but it's a lot more mm -hmm. fine grained information than you might get from summary or glimpse. Um, it's gonna tell you how many, um, not only the dimensions of your data set, but um, how many different of each type of vec uh, variable you have. So in this set, we have four character nice. ve vectors, 14 numeric, and one um, time variable. And then it gives you summaries for each of them that include, for instance, missing values and nice. the percentage of your data that is complete. Um, for the numeric variables, you get some five number summary type information. And I love the little mini histograms you get. Yeah, love it. Um, that's a really nice touch. You also get summary information for the POSIX CT. That's the time variable. The thing that I learned really recently is that if you do your skimmed um, data set, you can actually save that, for instance, and then just take a look at it. So uh, I don't know. Let's call this uh, flights skimmed. And we can just view that. Oh, lovely. And so um, this gives everything to you in a wide format data frame. So all of your variables now that were columns before, time, hour, oh. carrier, tail number, all that information that we saw with the skim command is now in a data set. And so we get different information for the numeric and for the character vectors. And so then the one that is not being described has missing values in these columns. Um, I thought that was a, a cute little thing that I learned this week. Really nice. You know, and, and I didn't know about that function. No, I had all, no idea. All that actually, until right now. So I've definitely learned something from you today, as always. So thanks very much for that, Andrew. Absolutely. You want to okay, show us something, I'm gonna, Greg? I'm going to hit share. Yeah. And this is this is probably a little bit more for people that are, uh, that are no, am I sharing yet? Hang on. Mm -hmm. hit share. Tell me when I'm sharing. We can see it. You can see it. Okay, this is probably for people that are kind of more early, early on in their in their experience of learning R. Uh, so if you're a hardened user, you might find this a little bit uh, sort of perfunctory. But the unique function, and I'm going to show you how this works quite nicely with this little uh, percentage in percentage, will tell you if I if I if I say unique and run that, it's going to tell me what values exist in this categorical in this category what unique values exist in this categorical variable very mm -hmm. good now i might want to filter for a few of them and instead of writing multiple 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 lines i can just sort of use this uh percent in percent and then use a concatenation to list the values that i want mm -hmm. to be included and then when i run that filter boom shakalaka 
it is confined only to, in this case, hair color that meets those criteria. So it's a nice, simple little trick. It mostly just neatens up your code. So, yeah. you know, you're talking about, in this case, it was just three, but quite often when we're writing code, uh, as you know, it, it, it can get a lot more complicated than that. You may have multiple, multiple variables, uh, uh, possible values in a particular categorical variable. And this is a nice, very neat way. And it's not just for the filter function. You can use that in, in, in multiple different ways. So nice little trick, neaten up your code, makes things easy. Um, so boom shakalaka, I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, that's really great. One thing that I love about that is um, if you look at that code, it actually reads kind of like a sentence. Do you mind showing that, throwing that up for one more yeah. second? Let's just yeah, yeah, look, yeah. At, look at that. Um, and this is something that that you get a lot of in the tidyverse that I really appreciate. So when I look at that filter command, I can I can see the sentence. Like take the di the yeah. Star Wars data set, select these variables, oh. and then filter it to only keep the values where hair color is in this vector, black, white, or brown. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so the syntax kind of reflects the way that we talk and honestly, the way that we tend to think. And isn't that just so sort of pathognomonic of the tidyverse? It's made for humans, not for machines. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and actually, really... like, that's, a nice, that's a nice segue because this is a big part of the book that we're writing is all about the tidyverse and how it is made for humans, not for machines and, you know, and how easy it is to use. So, uh, Andrew, do you want to just talk a little bit about the book, like what it's going to look like? Yeah, the, 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 the sort of short thing is that um, one of the things that I think we both love about R is that it is both powerful, but also user friendly if you are not someone who has a computer science major or who wants to invest a decade into really getting up to speed on a lot of more sophisticated data science techniques. And when you use Tidyverse R, you can really hit the ground running if you're a professional working with data, for instance, in healthcare or business or biometrics, whatever whatever it might be, politics. Um, and so if you're someone like that, who just has a lot of data that they wanna work with a little bit better, a little bit more powerfully without investing that decade into, into a computer science degree. Um, this is going to be the book for you that you can just have on your shelf to help mm. you deal with, the, with yeah. your data without a lot of headaches. Yeah. 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 And I must say, it's been so much fun writing it. Yeah. Uh, it's, ne it's nearly done. I think we've, we've got like a version of it that we, you know, just tweaking. So it's not long. Uh, we've got a publisher, no stocks. They're going to publish it. So happy days. Yeah. Come, yeah. It's coming your way in a, in a bookstore near you. Or and, uh, presumably Amazon download. I don't know. Happy days. So that that's exciting. Well, what, what we were just talking about the possibility of, and what we'll do is put a link in the description of the video and maybe in the comments. That and if we can, we can stick a link onto the screen too. Uh, that allow you to sort of sign up for just to be on a mailing list to be alerted for when the book is ready. We won't now, use the mailing list for anything else. I was going to say I don't want to spam people. Yeah. Right. It, we're going to send like one message when it comes out for the people when that the want to out, know. Yeah, if you, want an, if you want just an email alert that the book is out and ready and a link to where you can buy it, we will send you that. After which, you know, you're, Love it. you're not gonna use your name and email address for anything else. So Sounds good. This, this is a commitment from us to you. This is just for the book. Sounds good. Well, Greg, it's always a delight talking to you. And to uh, you uh, we'll, we'll be talking very, very soon about uh, about these edits we're doing right now. Yeah, exactly. And uh, until next time, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Don't ever change.